Hi everybody, I'm Teresa, and this is day one in week six that I am out of school. And I read you chapter 11 of Mealy Bedelia Unleashed yesterday, so today I'll read you chapter 12. Chapter 12, two slides, too many. First off, the judges had all the dogs run in a line in the same direction to examine how well they moved. This showed off Pierre's perfect poodle side beautifully. The judges looked pleased. The crowd roared its approval. I can do this, thought Amelia. I am doing this. Announcers named Bob and Melanie described the action for the fans. Their voices filled the arena. Bob, Melanie, this last group of dogs is what we've all been waiting for. They're the cream of the crop. Melanie, that's right, Bob. Any dog here could easily take home home the trophy. Bob, look at the at the bloodhound. I hate to have him on my trail. Melanie, that ti tiny Maltese is a gem. I wish my hair looked that good, Bob. Bob, well do we all do. Melanie, what a cutie, Melanie. Sherlock is being followed by the Jack Russell Terrier, another favorite with the crowd. Bob, listen to that applause. That's a little dog with tons of personality, Melanie. Here comes another star, Pierre. The French Standard Poodle. I remember him from last year, Bob. There's nothing standard about Pierre. He towers over that tiny Yorkshire Terrier, Melanie. That Yorkie is a baby. Adorable. Bob. Now the judges are having them reverse direction, showing off the other side of these champions to this very enthusiastic crowd. The audience began to applaud again. But gradually the applause peered out. The crowd buzzed. Something was different. Something was wrong. Up in the stands, Charlie's mom appeared to be the most perplexed of all. She looked at Amelia Bedelia's parents. Where's Pierre? she asked. I can see Amelia Bedelia, said Amelia Bedelia's father, but I still can't see Pierre. I, I must need new glasses. I see Amelia Bedelia too, said her mom. But I can't see Pierre either. I must finally need glasses. No, you don't, said Charlie's mom. She was looking through binoculars. Your eyes are fine. Pierre has been replaced by a big black dog. Melanie, Bob, the judges are confused, Bob. So am I, Melanie. Melanie, now the judges are conferring, scratching their heads, shaking their heads. They're counting. Looks like one is missing, Bob. A judge is missing. Melanie, no, Bob, a dog. A dog is missing. 
good grief. It appears Pierre, the poodle, has vanished. He's been replaced by a large black dog, Melanie. Let's see what these judges do, Bob. This is what the judges did. They directed Amelia Bedelia to walk back and forth to and fro. The crowd gasped, then fell totally silent. Amelia Bedelia smiled and patted Pierre on the head. At first, Amelia Bedelia's parents did, didn't know what to think. When their daughter turned the poodle one way, he was white and fluffy. When she turned him the other way, he was black and curly. Oh, said Amelia Bedelia's father. I get it. One side is a standard poodle and the other side is a poodle that has been dipped in. Amelia Bedelia's mother laughed harder than she had ever laughed in her life. At last, her father said, you laughed at one of my jokes. Pierre, my man, you rock, yelled Eric. He jumped up and began to clap and chant Pierre's name. Pierre, 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 shouted Amelia Bedelia's parents. Pierre, Pierre, shouted Charlie's mother. Pierre, 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 Pierre chanted the crowd. Amelia Bedelia could see Charlie peeking out from behind the curtain. Beth gunned him to come and join her, and when he did, Pierre jumped and licked his face. Then Pierre wagged his tail and wouldn't stop wagging. The crowd cheered, chanting, even louder, Pierre, 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 Pierre. Bye everybody, I'll read you chapter 13 tomorrow.